Now, moving from the coast to inland, we would like to learn about some of the innovative techniques utilized by the Ministry of Works Drainage Division as they tackle the issue of flooding whilst maintaining the current infrastructural systems and designs for modern living. Let us now hear from drainage engineer, Mr. Mohammed Baksh. Greetings to the Honorable Minister of Public Utilities, Marvin Gonzalez, all officials of the Ministry of Public Utilities and other government agencies, the Water and Sewage Authority, WASA, the Water Resources Agency, WRE, specially invited guests, and other presenters. I am Mohammed Baksh from Drainage Division, Ministry of Works and Transport, and I'm here today, here today to present the Strategic Drainage Plan. Um, we'd like to thank Adopter River Program for having us in their fifth annual conference today, connecting the dots, harnessing technology and innovation. So just briefly, we have a presentation overview of what we're going to go through today. We'll have some opening remarks and give you all a brief introduction of drainage vision. We'll identify some of the issues that we face. We'll give you all some information with regards to our development of the strategic drainage plan and also some of our current initiatives that we are attempting to execute. Just to recap uh, the core functions of Drainage Division, of course, we are, an ex we are an executing agency and we're responsible for the maintenance of major natural watercourses in Trinidad. We also mitigate and alleviate flooding and erosion through the execution of construction and desilting projects. We build and maintain irrigation systems as well as ensure that all approvals for land developments have satisfied the Drainage Division's approval process. Of course, we also provide advisory services for drainage-related matters as well. So, I know we'll identify a lot of flooding issues and issues as it relates to this matter today. So, I'll just, I'll just go through briefly some of the natural and anthropogenic or man-made issues that cause flooding, right? So, as of recently, we'll be noticing that rainfall and climate change has been influencing the flooding that we have in Trinidad. And the type of rainfall that occurs, of course, is different now. We have shorter duration and higher intensity type of rainfall. Also, topography and soil characteristics also influence it. Some areas, of course, are generally low-lying and typically are prone to flooding. And if subsequent rainfall occurs concurrently, this also causes an issue with regards to the soil because, of course, the soil no longer can retain any water. And, of course, it, it goes straight into runoff. And of course, we can't, we can't not mention the man-made issues. And some here, of course, there are many more. And we like to highlight the land use issues in terms of the unplanned and unapproved developments, the nuding of our hillsides, and all of the associated issues with regard to land use, which in thereby increases runoff substantially. And there's also human behavioral patterns. There are people who encroach on the river reserves, encroach on the rivers, and the floodplains divert the watercourses, block it, and indiscriminate dumping of rubbish throughout the country. We notice this, and it's of course prevalent, and it's collected of course in the rivers. And this of course clogs the channels, and is also a very big environmental concern. As a result of all of these issues, the infrastructure of course has become dated. And to handle this increased runoff, it, it, cannot, it cannot handle this, this kind of increased runoff. So there, thereby we have to upgrade and increase the volume and mitigate the, mitigate the issues that are happening right now. So many studies were undertaken in the recent past and many recommendations were made in different catchment areas in Trinidad. So we determined the need to assess the present situation. And through a technical cooperation in 2019, which occurred over the period of two weeks, we developed a rapid assessment with a consultant. And with this, we approached the CAF to get a technical grant and develop the strategic drainage plan. This was done in 2021. This would have prioritized the various measures in short, medium, and long term. And it sought to compile many of the recommendations across all of, us, all of our studies that we have done in the past. And it also considered both structural and non-structural measures, as well as any gaps, and there were many gaps identified in terms of areas that we didn't study or areas that we have studied and missed out certain issues. So when we attempt to meet these gaps, this is where this document becomes a living document, right? Because every single time you go and you study an area, 
you'll have to revise the document and upgrade it accordingly and reprioritize and relook at your document. And one of the major things that, that is coming out is that, and of course we know this, the approach to mitigate flooding is a multi-sectoral approach. One agency, one ident entity like Drainage Division or WASA or whoever cannot take it up alone on their backs. This is an approach that has to encompass a lot of agencies. And we will be attempting to, to address this together. And we, we hope that by these avenues, we all can come out and, and further from this meeting, we hope an action item maybe that we all will attempt to continue to work together and address this issue. So I'll just take the opportunity now to just highlight some of the initiatives we do as, at the drainage division. And um, in our sections, the planning section mainly, um, they attempt to mitigate the issues in terms of the approval processes for the developments that come in for approval. And that is mitigating the pre and post, the post developmental flow and the flows that leave developments and ensure that they either are less or equal to the pre developmental flow. And of course, the, the designs must meet or exceed various return periods. And um, they are, the guidelines, of course, are online, and you could go ahead and feel free on the ministry's website to check it out. We also recommend river reserves for any developments that come very close to the, to the rivers. And we encourage the use of detention ponds and, and other types of storage within the development to ensure that the post-development flow is mitigated. And we encourage the use of green infrastructure in developments. It's not something we have been seeing much, but um, some developers are actually attempting to use it. And I know there are other presenters today who will be covering these, these matters. Also, we have our yearly Silton program. Um, the river in question here is actually St. Joseph River at its confluence to the Kearney River. And we attempt to undertake at least 300 projects yearly based on funding across various channels in Trinidad. This basically attempts to clear blockages and ensure that the channel performs adequately, as well as reinstating embankments, as in the case of this project here. We also have large capital projects that we attempt to undertake in terms of reconstruction of embankments in various areas, upgrading of, of channels and structures to handle the increased flow, and also rehabilitate existing infrastructure, as in the case of the St. John's Sus Gate and other gates short. This also is in the Kelly Way in Kearney River. Uh, we had done some rehabilitation works in 2020. And also we have partnered with um, various local agents. Um, this is one project here where we use Vetivia in the Santa Cruz River. Now, we are not only attempting to do structural measures, we are attempting to do non-structural measures. Now, this is where the overlap occurs. Um, we are attempting to revise our drainage guidelines, right? We're going to attempt to update it and at some point upgrade it to a robust manual that we can provide to developers. Also, flooding data in Trinidad and Tobago, of course, it's, it, it, there's no clear guidance in terms of who is responsible for collecting this data. And um, of course, it always is a problem to get the data. So what we are attempting to do is develop a flood reporting system and we're in the early stages of it. Right now we are identifying and formalizing our inventory, our river inventory. And um, we'd like to partner with our various agencies and develop the proper mechanism to collect this data more effectively. In recent times when we were doing all our studies and doing this strategic change plan, this data has been a critical item. And um, to develop our socioeconomic analyses and those sort of things, it tends to be tricky. So if it is we have a proper reporting system, we'll have an idea and a good, a good, a good collection of this data and we could utilize this for further studies later on and talking about studies again we want to complete studies in critical areas that were identified in our gap analysis and um we was identified that only 50 percent of trend was actually studied in recent years so we'd like to address this gap in the coming years and close this and finally we would like to update the existing flood maps we have existing flood maps that were prepared by various agencies, namely ODPM and other studies that actually take the care of different types of maps. For instance, there's flood, susceptibility, flood susceptibility maps, flood hazard maps, flood inundation maps. Now, what we would like to do is update these maps and develop actual inundation maps to advise our various agencies, such as the Town and Country Development, Town and Country, Town and Country Planning Division, and the regional corporations. And um, this will advise 
this will advise the various agencies where to build and how to build. And um, these are just some of the current initiatives that we want to address in terms of non-structural. There are many more, but um, we are attempting to address these in the short term. That's it from me and Drainage Division for now. Um, I'd like to thank you all very much. And um, if you all have any further questions, if you all have any, any questions for us, feel free to ask. Thank you.